The cause of death of many early locomotives is the plane friction bearing. Let's say somebody gives you this locomotive, you or your organization, under the condition that it's got to be moved. The plant where is at, they're going to build condos, it's still on the rail, the rail still connects to the railroad. <laughs> the locomotive's got value, it's got historical significance, but more than likely it'll get cut up. And why is that? The plane bearings. Okay, it's not going to roll on the class one. So you've got four main choices. Cut it up, we all hate that. Truck it, which we're gonna get into just a little bit. Load it on a flat car, which is problematic in that this weighs more than 100 tons. So you can't put it on a standard flat car. You're gonna to have to have a depressed well car with multi-axles, or there are flat cars with six axles that could take that. Then you've gotta tie it down on the car which is another project in itself. Number four is modify the trucks. So we're gonna to touch on a couple of those and then continue just a little bit into why this happened and how it happened. So if you were gonna modify the trucks, you would take this end of the axle and machine it to, to hold an AP bearing. I talked to Jim at Lions Industries in Pennsylvania. Jim's been doing this work for a long time. He would turn off the flange there at the end of the axle, take a pass on the bearing surface, and drill and tap the holes in the end of the axle, push on AP bearings, reconditioned ones, all for $1,200 an axle. He can convert this plain bearing to roller bearing, $1,200 per axle, including the bearings. Now the bearing box, the journal box, gets a $250 modification, which is taking out the oil seal in the back and uh, machining out. There's a couple ears in there so that the correct adapter will go up in there. So you could take an older locomotive, lift the locomotive, roll the truck out, disassemble the truck, strip the axles down, send them away, get the machine, get bearings put on them, bring them back, reassemble the truck, put it back under the locomotive, and then the axles would be acceptable. But then there's some other issues that we maybe talk about in the future, end of car cushioning, draft gear, and the air brake test. So that's what it would take to modify the trucks. A couple other options that people do, they put an idler truck underneath it, but it does not have air cylinders on it for the brakes. So you can roll one around in your yard on dummy trucks, but you, it won't go out on the railroad because it doesn't have brake cylinders. And you could disassemble the truck and put freight car axle in it with no traction motors. It would have AP bearings on the end. You'd have to modify the boxes. Not a bad idea, but you still end up with a lot of crane and disassembly of the trucks. Those are all problems for modifying the trucks. Here's a big old Rock Island locomotive being moved on a modular transporter. This is a YouTube video, Locomotive Rides Truck in City Streets. This was an expensive move. Go watch that video and uh, look at the crane time, the SPMT time. Uh, trucks are being hauled on a, on a different tractor trailer. This is an expensive move. You've got to have big donors, a lot of money yourself, or a government agency helping you on a project like this. Okay, this is a friend of mine, Jim, from Over the Top Construction and Transport, moving an Alco RS3 on rubber tires right down the street. This is not inexpensive. It is not easy to do, but it can be done, and Jim can do it and does it all the time. This is a YouTube video called Highball 25, or Saving the Adder on Deck 25. Great video. Shows you how complex and how detailed a locomotive move is over the street. So I'm here today at the Hawking Valley Railway. This is a really neat organization in Nelsonville, Ohio. A lot of nice equipment. And uh, we're going to look at some of their equipment. 
and the roller bearings and the journal bearings. Yeah, it's hot. Yeah, I'm sweaty. But uh, this is a good example of what they have here. So this Royal Caboose is going to be an excellent little classroom for us. What I want to point out here is here's your plain bearing. This is the waste area, oil, and there's your bearing. So if you look at a truck frame, it'll give you some interesting clues as to what's going on. First thing we're going to see here, this journal is five and a half by ten, five and a half inches diameter, ten inches long. And this truck apparently built in 48, six of 48. Just showing the evolution away from plane bearing, which could be stolen, took a lot of maintenance cause problems toward AP roller bearing. And I did like the story of how Timken really pushed the name friction. I was using it in the other video, kind of playing into Timken's hand, calling it friction. This is a good view of a journal box that's in the truck side frame. <laughs> Interesting, I'm looking at the oil down there. That's where a little bit of oil has come out of the back of that seal. So that looks a lot like the journal box that we took off the locomotive, except for, of course, it's part of the side frame. There is no equalizer. The side frame is what takes the weight down onto the top of the axle. So this is your AP bearing three bolts on the end. This is the bearing itself. Of course, there's a uh, adapter that fits on top, takes the weight directly down onto the bearing, onto the axle. Ha! Ah, I found it. It is a hot, sweaty day, but I found it. This is what you wanted to see. It's what I wanted to see. This is roller bearings put in an old plane bearing box. So what do you see when you walk up to it or see it from a distance? I could have started that a little further out. No lids. That should tell you something's going on. Well, what's going on is you don't need the lids anymore because that's got a Timken roller bearing in it. Notice the three bolts. We talked about that being your indicator that it had a roller bearing. And like I mentioned down at the other end of the yard, you put a hole in it so that water and debris. Now look at this, this is interesting. This has got a big piece of ballast in there. You don't want stuff like that in there. That's what I was looking for because that's the intermediate step between friction, plain bearing, and roller bearing as we saw down the way there. So this is it, this is converted. Let's see if we can get the date off the side of this truck. 1947. So who knows what year the conversion was done. Take off the lid, put a hole in the bottom of the box, put the different type of adapter up in there, and then put the whole thing back together. You won't need the seal in the back of the box anymore the seal slid right down in this slot and you'll notice there is no seal in there now you don't need it because the ap bearing the roller bearing the Timken roller bearing is lubricated for life this right here is a defect card holder where they would staple still got a couple staples in it where they would staple paperwork regarding what kind of repair the car needed now this old car here while we're here Built in 1923, riveted. If you see a ship on the Great Lakes that's riveted, you're looking at an older ship. Same with rail cars. Also, look how this is held down by this uh, large strap with a turnbuckle and, and wood cribbing in there as the buffer. <laughs> UTLX, which is Union Tank Car. I'd like to know the history of that. So that's just about going to wrap it up for our journal box, journal bearing, plane bearing, friction bearing, mop head 
got to keep it lubricated or you'll have a hot box lesson. I've really enjoyed having you guys along. This is a blast for me. I'd love to know all of you and uh, do this together, but through modern technology, we can share it. I almost guarantee you're not as sweaty as I am right now. Thank you all.